Okay, well, we're having the sale on the man program from the day until Sunday. And let me just say this. Right now, I'm giving you plenty of time to get in there. Uh, recently, I had a bunch of people hit me up because I had a sale that was for 24 hours. And after 24 hours, the sale was over. So if you want to go ahead and get into the man program and get the future benefits that are coming, the link's below. And once again, I can tell you after Sunday, the price is going up. The price is going up. So if you want a part of this and you want a part of the future, go below. I see a lot of people who are doing gig work and I've been watching a lot of gig work videos, DoorDash, Instacart, Uber, Lyft, Spark, Amazon Flex. And here's something that I never actually see. I never see that these people have properly set up their business. Years ago, when I drove for Uber, 2014, I was able to go ahead and enter my LLC. So this is going to be a quick, brief synopsis of what you should do as a gig worker. Number one, get your LLC. Number two, get a EIN. Number three, get a business checking account. Number four, get your first business credit card. All right. And there's more to this. You should also set yourself up with ADP, Gusto, or some payment provider. What you should do, and this is just some of my observations. In the beginning, you should work seven days a week. Why? You need to get yourself some attitude money. You need to get this thing rolling, right? So also, you will work seven days a week, and I would do what's called multi-apping. If you're doing DoorDash, I would do Uber Eats and I would do Uber because essentially you don't want to just be sitting. You want to be consistently moving. So work seven days a week, work 10, 12 hours a day. Yes, 10, 12 hours a day. Now, why is this? When you're doing gig work, you're self-employed and you have added cost of gas, the added depreciation on your car. So what you want to do is go ahead and start getting ahead of these expenses because I was watching the video on, I don't know if this is true or not, but like 80% of the gig workers are part-time. They only work a few hours a day and there's like 20% are hardcore full-timers. So once again, you should do that because here's the thing. And after you get your first business credit card, you want to get a business credit card. You should get a second business credit card. Now, why is this? Uh, I know from training and teaching people that most people don't have an emergency fund. They don't have an emergency savings account. The second business credit card will be your emergency business credit card. Um, first of all, I would use all of my expenses on that business credit card. I would use gas, uh, American Express, um, there are certain credit cards, business credit cards where you can get points back for gas or you can get miles or whatever you want. So I would definitely get a rewards credit card. Definitely. And I would get two, the primary rewards credit card. So you get gas, you can fill up and everything. Now, why do you want that second credit card? Okay. Let's say you're out here, you're doing uh, DoorDash. Let's say you're doing Uber Eats, you're doing Uber and you are running your car hard. You're running your car hard. And then you're at the point where, let's say, this is optimum conditions where you're multi-apping, you're working hours, and you're doing about four or 500 bucks a day, right? Now, what happens is you're out there, you're doing your thing, then someone like, bam, hits your car, your car's wrecked, all right? So what you would immediately do the next day is go get you a rental car the next day. You will not wait and get you a rental car and use your emergency business credit card for the emergency and then just keep going.
So by having a daily use credit card and having an emergency business credit card, if something happens, you're never out of the game because you can instantly go ahead. I know for a fact that you can rent cars for Uber. You can rent cars for Lyft. I know this for a fact because they used to have a car rental agency. So essentially, the next day you're back in the game, even though your car is wrecked. Now, also, the reason that you want to have a business credit card. Once again, having you know, also you should have a copy of QuickBooks. QuickBooks. So let's go ahead through the top. Biz, LLC, EIN, business checking, a business credit card, ADP, and QuickBooks. So you want to have all this stuff because you should be running your, your gig economy business like a real business. And one of the reasons you want to bust and do 7, 10, 12 hour days is to go ahead and get you some attitude money. So you do this maybe the first three months and you manage to save up 10, 15,000. This is now you can cut back and work regular hours if you so desire and you have money because I, I see so many people talking about doing gig work and they don't have any structure formation enough and they're just out here running their car into the ground. And this is another reason you want to have the business credit because once again, once you go ahead and have the ADP, your business credit cards and you pay your taxes, guess what? Let's say you've been running your car ragged, right? And now you need another car. Now that you have a business that you have filed taxes on, guess what you can do? You can go to Bank of America and get what's called a commercial vehicle loan. Also, you should have commercial insurance on your car, but you can go out and get a commercial loan that's in your business. And this car, which you're using and running into the ground, becomes a tax deduction. So once again, you, you can you can go ahead and buy this car in the name of your business. And since you're using it for business in the miles and the tax deduction of the car, it, well, it just depends on how many miles you drive, because if you're driving a lot of miles, the government gives you like almost 60 cents per mile. So that adds up. So just take whatever is greater, the mileage or the deduction for the car. Now, one of the things that I, I, I never see people do and talk about this is having um, payment plan like the way that I've set myself up because I'm self-employed. Um, I don't have no vacation pay, no PTO pay and none like stuff. So I just set it up where when I'm out, I'm not working. I still get paid. So one of the things you can do is to go ahead and start a YouTube channel if you're doing gig work. Because I've seen Nugs, Moore's Finance, right along with Bree. There's a number of people who are doing gig work and doing a YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel could make four to ten thousand dollars a month, as well as the money you make for doing gig work. So this is one of the things that if you're going to do gig work, I think you should really, really be looking at incorporating this. So number one. LLC. Number two, EIN. Number three, business checking. Number four, business checking account. Number five, ADP. Number six, commercial insurance. This is a biggie because a lot of insurance companies know if you're doing gig work that they will cancel your policy. So you need to go out and get yourself a commercial insurance policy. Yes, it's going to be more expensive. Yes, but let's go ahead and look at it. Your gas is now tax deductible. Your car is tax deductible. Your commercial insurance is tax deductible. So what you can do by setting up your business correctly is get crazy amount of tax benefits and tax deductions. Because I see so many people out here doing gig work part time and there's no there's no formality. There's no setup because another thing that you should do if you're going to do the gig work is like literally have a plan. I see so many people get caught up in the gig economy. There is no plan. They're just out here making money, making money. There's no plan for the future. So you should say, I'm going to do gig work for this amount of time. And then I'm going to get out because you should be stacking money, building yourself up and giving yourself the funds to do something different because gig work 
is a dead end job. If you're doing Uber Eats, DoorDash, Uber Lyft, what you start is what you continue to do because there's no graduation in this. So I just thought I would put this out here because, like I said, I've never seen anyone even talk about this. I've seen bits and pieces of this. And also, when you go ahead and set yourself up with ADP, and this is huge, when it comes time to rent an apartment or do something and they're going to ask for pay stubs, boom. And then when it comes to the time, like, who do you work for? Just send them the name of your LLC, because essentially I was working with someone who um, was doing their own thing. And once again, we set them up with ADP. We set all this other stuff. And I, I got a message from him. It's like, you know, I just had to go rent a place and it was like super easy. They asked for pay stubs. I had pay stubs. I gave them my pay stubs. I got the apartment. It was just super easy. So what you do is you set yourself up for life. You set yourself up to win. You set yourself up for the to win. And also you, you have goals and plans and stuff. So I just thought I would put this video out here because there's so many people who are doing gig work with no plan, no structure, no pathway. And this commercial insurance is going to become a biggie. It's going to become a biggie in the future because once again, I'm telling you, State Farm, Progressive, all these insurance companies are starting to cancel gig worker policies. And I can tell you from, you know, 2014, um, I drove for Uber for six weeks and during those six weeks, I had almost had an accident every day that I drove. So when you're on the road consistently out here hustling and stuff, and this is one of the things that you will notice with Uber drivers that's been driving, they, they drive slow for a reason because they drive slow to get in plenty of time to get out of the way of an accident. But this is one of the things you should do to go ahead and set yourself up. Now, also, I have something that's going on called the man program, which has a lot of this information that you'll need to go ahead and set your business up and some other goodies. So the link is right below. Go ahead and get in that and go ahead and start actually formalizing your gig economy work life. And once again, the whole YouTube thing is huge. It is huge. It is huge. So. The links below, we're currently having the sale, which ends Sunday. So go ahead and get in there right now.